Hello everyone, how are you? Uh, I am today going to show you how to create a MySQL database using Amazon RDS which stands for Relational Database System. So uh, in our day-to-day -day application development we always require some sort of uh, data storage. For example, we have like users, we have customers, we have invoices, everything we need to store in a database. So database is a very key aspect of uh, modern day web application even on mobile apps as well. So uh, for this reason we need to have a database server. So Amazon supports different kind of uh, database servers using RDS. So RDS, what is RDS? RDS is a managed database service which is provided by Amazon AWS. So uh, the benefit of using RDS is we don't need to manage the underlying hardware where uh, AWS is responsible for doing this. We just create those database and use those as a service which is offered by AWS. So uh, to keep it short, let's show you the process so that you can use a very simple database to a complex database like uh, Oracle or this sort of uh, complex structures. So let's go to RDS and create a database. I am in my AWS console home. So let's go to click here RDS and uh, then I'm, I will be redirected to RDS section here. then uh, in the RDS section at this moment uh, you can see there is no database instances created so let me create a new database I'm going to create simple MySQL today which uh, which stays within the free tier then I'm going to only use the free tiers so only show me the options which is also in the free tier free tier means you get no charging for using this free tier service for 12 months after you have signed up to your AWS account. So I have selected MySQL and then I go to next and uh, let's give some more information. So uh, the license model is general public license that stays as it is. The DV engine version I want to use uh, 5.7 latest that is 5.7.25 5.8 is still I haven't tested this so I will not try to use 5.8 at, at this moment but maybe in later on I will try to create a new one with 5.8 as 8.0 as well so uh, here the DV instance we need to use T2 micro because we want to use stay within the free tier so T2 micro stays within that free tier then allocated storage we want to use uh, 20 gigs so that should serve the basic purpose that should be sufficient for holding a uh, small or medium size e-commerce or even your different kind of web or mobile applications however if you need more than 20 gigs you can just type in here but for this demonstration uh, we don't need more than 20 gigs so let's keep this as it is and then the settings uh, DB instance identifier I just give you a name so my blog database then uh, the master username so uh, each MySQL database has a master user as a master password the master user has a super access which can do anything on the database and then uh, after creating the master <coughs> username and password you can create different uh, users for different database which has only access to that particular database so uh, let me give it a name my blog master user and then I just grab a password here from password generator generate my password I just uh, remove the empty strings okay I have used my passwords here as well great so now I have given my 
master username master passwords then I click next okay then uh, virtual private cloud default VPC I choose default VPC but if you have a separate VPC you can use that publicly accessible yes because I want to publicly accessible this uh, from my local PC using uh, my SQL workbench uh, but if you don't feel uh, comfortable with MySQL Workbench, you can use PHP MyAdmin and use a separate web server to host your uh, PHP MyAdmin. But I am comfortable with MySQL Workbench, so I just need to publicly accessible. And I will later on restrict the access only to my IP address so that I can only access the database from my local no one else as then availability zone I keep it as default no preference uh, VPC security group just create a new security group here then database options a default database will be created let's uh, do this sites and shops then uh, database port is 3306 you can change it if you want uh, parameter group mysql default 5.7 option group default 5.7 I keep it as it is to advance label we might need to create a new parameter group if we wanted to change some default settings but at this moment I am just creating those a database server so I am not going to uh, change this so I keep as it is I am DB authentication disabled because I'm not going to try that okay then backups backups is very important because uh, it's our database and if it's for production I recommend highly recommend to use this seven days uh, backup retention period that means AWS will automatically keep your whole instance backup for seven days and you can just restore anytime in those last seven days with a point in time restoration then uh, disable enhanced monitoring at this moment I'm not going to use that uh, maybe later on I will create some more uh, videos out of this then maintenance enable auto minor version upgrade yeah true enable de delete protection yes I want to be avoid accidental deletion so uh, maintenance window no preference so I have selected everything here let's go to next okay your div instance is being created great note your instance take a few minutes it usually takes around three to four minutes to uh, to be able to access your uh, database server and let's wait for this and uh, let's see if we can access in that period we go to databases and we can see the status here it's uh, it's creating the database server and then setting up those user credentials and then uh, the security options everything with this uh, time frame so when this is uh, green then we we can directly access the database so uh, uh, if I go to the details and then I can see these subnets this VPC this security groups has been created so um, it's it will take some time so let's be patient and uh, let me explain those tabs what what we have here so in the RDS we have uh, these tabs uh, one for connectivity and security one for monitoring one for log and events one for configuration one for maintenance and backups and one for tags so connectivity and security in the connectivity tab we see the endpoint of this database server that means uh, the host name of the database server which will we will use in our applications or in our uh, from our local MySQL workbench anywhere so the endpoint is very important and then those comes the port which have which we have initially configured to 3306 then uh, we have configured the VPC that is also given here the security groups where we can restrict the access of this uh, RDS to only specific IPs and then we have uh, details of this security groups and applications then we have monitoring in the monitoring section we can see uh, different kind of uh, monitoring 
tools there are 17 monitoring tools available CPU utilizations DB connections free storage freeable memory write IOPS and read IOPS and many more the most important uh, monitoring tools are available at the top CPU DB connections free storage free memory I usually check the free uh, memory part because that's important if your memory is full then your database server will become slow or sometime may be become down and also the CPU utilization and uh, those two are very important I usually monitor those and sometimes create some alarms out of this then login events uh, here all those logs relates to cloud watch alarms or recent events can be viewable here the database is still not available so we cannot see any more uh, here but when it is available we can see over there then we go to next step configuration here we have uh, all those configurations that is relates to this RTS mostly uh, the instance ID the version the engine version the DB name the uh, ARN the resource ID creation time and then RAM virtual CPU master username and uh, storage type so this sort of uh, informations we can have in the configurations <laughs> then we have maintenance and backups here we can see when our backup has been created by AWS automatically and what are the status of those backups here and tags we can add tags here tags are basically to identify in this uh, this instance in the billing section also in other areas by using tag so I highly recommend you add some tags to those uh, RTS instances okay so it looks like we are almost there so it's created now backing up so uh, let's wait a few more seconds and I hope it should be ready till then okay um, let's try to use uh, the RTS so we have the endpoint ready so let's copy this endpoint and I just want to create a new uh, I want just want to connect to that instance so let's create a new connection uh, RTS I give it the host name and the username that's uh, I can find in this configuration tab my username here then I go to uh, test the connection so let's test it okay they wants to know my password the password is here I give the password I save the password in the keychain and let's see if we can connect to the database yes successfully made the connection so we were able to connect to the database now let's uh, oh, create ok and then I do filter out here let me connect to that instance it's green available so I hope we can connect to that instance now yeah there it is we can see I have connected to that RDS database and at this moment um, I see these default schemas that is created by AWS by default so this is the name database name that I have given sites and shops it has no tables at all I can just create some tables in ODB and system tables so uh, this is my RDS and I can run any queries over here I can create tables I can uh, create MySQL views triggers everything is possible using this uh, MySQL workbench with RDS it's all about uh, it's everything is created now for ourselves and the most important thing is we don't need to manage anything here 
AWS is managing the server, it is upgrading the patches, it is maintaining the downtime and also backups, everything is managed by AWS. So uh, let me check the session and as you can see the host name is exactly same as uh, the host name that we have selected. Okay. So uh, this is a very basic uh, demonstration on how you can create an RDS and then uh, based on this you can do anything as you want based on your requirement. You can create apps, you can create your e-commerce, you can create those kind of uh, backup databases here <coughs> so many options are possible when you use RTS and important thing is you don't need to manage the underlying hardware to use this uh, huge uh, database service so I hope this will help you to get started with RTS and uh, it will give you some flexibility on managing those your complex data structures Thank you for watching this video and I, uh, I wish you have a successful journey on your AWS certification. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.